This is Green Tech Media's Five Questions, the 2014 Solar Summit edition. I'm Stephen Lacey, Senior Editor with Green Tech Media, and in this conference video series, we're sitting down with solar executives to hear about what's happening in their area of the market. I'm here with Jim Morganson, the Director of Strategic Accounts for the leading inverter manufacturer, SMA. Jim, how are you? Good to see you. Doing great today, Stephen. How are you doing? Good. Good. So I want to talk about a number of integration issues and where inverters fit in. Yeah. Everyone's talking about storage right now and sort of where that fits into the solar industry. What's your perception on where storage is headed in the U.S. and where do in inverters fit into that? Yeah, you know, storage is a hot topic, right? There's been uh, a lot of talk at the conference here about it, and, you know, SMA has been at the core of uh, storage solutions with a Sunny Island product for many, many years. And as the cost of the storage device comes down, and some of the discussions here at the show are saying that storage is, is coming down faster than, you know, the typical PV uh, curve we've seen over the last couple of years. So, I, you know, we see both utility storage transmission distribution, as well as commercial storage as uh, solutions that will get uh, piloted later this year and into next year we see it as really a game changer for the industry. So one of the reasons why people are talking about storage is because in areas of high penetration of PV, we're starting to need to see things back up those systems or balance out the grid. And so when you think about grid integration in states like Hawaii and now in California, What's important to remember about the inverter? Yeah, so, you know, the inverter can be a, a great steward for the grid. Um, there are different technologies that are out there today. The, the good news is SMA's inverters available today now in North America, in California, in Hawaii, have these grid management features that we're able to provide both what we call autonomous features. These are features that you can just turn on and walk away and forget. But longer term, you know, we see the, the need for uh, curtailment potentially and maybe frequency response being requested by the utilities. Uh, and again, the inverters today have this ability to deliver that capability. And you know, as, the, um, as the penetration continues to increase, not just in California and Hawaii, but across the whole U.S., um, it'll be more and more important for the utilities and the installers and developers to incorporate these features into their system and whether they use them today or whether they just put them on hold and expect to use them in the future, it'll at least be there and we think that's key for systems that are being designed today. So we've seen string inverters become more important in the commercial rooftop sector. Why is that? You know, three-phase string inverters have been used in Europe for a long time and they have uh, had the aha moment some years ago that you know, by breaking the system down and maybe instead of using a 900 kilowatt inverter or 500 kilowatt inverter, using a bunch of smaller inverters, there's a bunch of economies of scale that happen. There's repeatability, there's inventory turns, there's simplicity around system design, system installation, and system monitoring and diagnostics. There's the architecture itself lends to really a, a better installed system. And so, the transition to three-phase string is here. It's transitioning to 1,000 volt as well. And all of the functionality, I think, will really help drive the, uh, the solar industry further and uh, greater penetration. So it's interesting, when you look at the commercial market, some of the big customers, you know, like a Walmart or an Ikea, are actually issuing their own product specs for equipment. Why is that? You know, it's the same transition now happening at the commercial space that happened at the utility space. So for many years, you know, the utility, uh, you know, utilities bought solar through third parties. And if you go back a few years, you know, the Walmarts of the world have been selectively buying small systems and doing pilots at their uh, buildings. And now I think they've gained enough confidence that they say, hey, this is something we're ready to go do ourselves." What we're being told is that the ROI for them to put solar on some of their plants in particular markets, it's, it's better for them where it meets their CapEx goals to go place that money in solar versus maybe go do something like a marketing campaign. So then moving up from those commercial projects, let's think about utility scale mega projects. Right. Why are so many of these using SMA products? Yeah, you know, in North America today, we have north of 50% of the installed base of uh, utility power plants. And, you know, the core reason for that at the end of the day is, you know, our machines are extremely reliable and the performance of the machine. And we've been able to do things like um, grid emulation, um, a latest service package that we offer where we come in with a generator, 
We trick the inverter to think that it's uh, on a 60 hertz grid. The inverter powers up and we literally drive full power through an inverter, through a medium voltage transformer, and then burn it off on a uh, resistor bank and prove out an entire plant prior to ever having the AC interconnected. Well, Jim Morganson of SMA, thanks for coming by. Nice to talk to you. Steven, thanks for having us. Appreciate it.